So today we are asking a biblical ethical question. What makes for a holy marriage or intimate relationship? So of course, as interpreters of the Bible, we're going to look to the Bible to help us answer this question. What makes for a holy or good intimate or marriage relationship? So we can start with all of the, the different examples of marriage in the Bible, of which they are many. So one of the documents I provided lists just a smattering of some of the marriage models that we have in Scripture. Now, some of these may be very concerning to you. I'm just going to share a few of these with you. Of course, we have Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Before the fall, Adam and Eve are partners. They are helpers to each other. They are naked and unashamed, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. After the fall, the curse says that a woman's desire will be for her husband and he shall rule over her. We have plenty of models in the Bible of marriage equaling subordination for women. Women were vulnerable, they were dependent, they were often considered property of their husbands. We have a lot of examples in the Bible of marriage plus concubines or handmaidens. Abraham, Jacob, Solomon all had multiple concubines. We have a lot of examples in the Bible of polygamy. King David, Solomon, Esau, Jacob, these were all men that had multiple wives. There's the practice of the Levirate marriage in Genesis 38. After a husband dies, his brother must marry the widow. We have examples in Deuteronomy of rules that say a rapist must marry his rape victim, and he must also pay the victim's father 50 shekels because the father will lose the property of his daughter. We have practices regarding male soldiers and prisoners of war, male and female slaves. So we have some models of marriage that should make us very uncomfortable. There are other models of marriage as well. Um, you think of Mary and Joseph. Mary was a very young, probably teenage girl, married to a much older Hebrew man. We have celibacy. Jesus and Paul are themselves celibate. They're not getting married at all. We have the idea that marriage is an alternative to lust, so it is better to marry than to burn, but it is better to marry not to marry at all. We have Christian marriage under the Roman household codes. These codes set up certain orders for how husbands and wives should relate, how masters and slaves should relate, and how children and their parents should relate. They say things like, slaves, obey your earthly masters. Women, be subject to your husbands. Of course, in this passage, we also see the idea that the relationship between husband and wife should be like that of Christ and his church. We have some marriages in the early church, like Ananias and Sapphira and Priscilla and Aquila, where their purpose as a married couple is to support the church community. And finally, in Revelation, we have the marriage of God and the New Jerusalem. So, just looking at the marriages that exist in the Bible may not give us enough to help answer this question, what makes for a holy marriage or intimate relationship? So we have to do a little more work. 